much, Abby. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to have you. So many faces. I'm so excited. Feel free to turn on your camera if you would like. Don't feel pressured to if not. I teach all day. So I love looking at smiling faces. It's like why I do what I do. So um, feel free to turn them on if you want. I wanted to start off briefly with a real quick introductions, who I am, all the amazing students I brought with me this evening to talk to you a little bit. So real quick, uh, my name is Robin Puttick. I am the uh, Interim Associate Dean of Undergraduate Studies for the School of Architecture and Planning for Catholic University of America. That is a long title, um, but it's great to meet you. If you come to Catholic, you'll be talking to me uh, quite a bunch um, because I talk to all of the undergraduate students. Um, who am I? I'm a practicing architect with over 20 years of experience. I am from New Jersey originally, but I've been practicing in Maryland, DC, and Virginia for those 20 years. So I'm a, I'm a local architect to Catholic University. I take my students out in the site and in the field, show them my buildings. We were talking earlier just now on this call. I did the Silver Spring Library in Maryland. So a lot of my students know the buildings that I have designed. And I think that's a great um, part of the architecture curriculum there. Uh, I've been teaching at Catholic University for four years. Uh, my formal title there not only is the Interim Associate Dean for undergraduates, but I'm also a visiting assistant professor. And my specialties are sustainability and neuroarchitecture. And neuroarchitecture is the overlap of architecture and your well being, mental, physical, emotional, how buildings and site designs affect our well being. So, those are the two things that I'm very interested in. Um, so without further ado, I'd love it if we could introduce, and I'll, I'll call your name, all of the fantastic students um, that are joining us today. Sana, would you like to introduce yourself first? Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, um, your major, anything additional you think these wonderful guests would like to hear? Hello, my name is Sana Dukes. Um, I'm a freshman architecture major. Um, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, so very far away. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Sana. How about Sam? Oh, Sam, I can't hear you. Uh-oh. Oh. There you go. All right. I'm Sam Radu. Uh, I'm a freshman at Catholic University, I'm majoring in architecture and planning, and I'm from Frederick, Maryland. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. MJ. Hi, I'm MJ. I'm the dual degree in architecture and civil engineering. So if you had any questions about that, you could ask later on. And um, I'm from Long Island, New York, like I said before. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, MJ. Julia. Hi, I'm Julia Slotman. I'm also a dual degree, um, which is the civil engineering and architecture, as she mentioned. I'm also in the honors program. Um, I'm from New York, but I'm currently living in South Carolina. Um, I'm also a member of the rugby team here at Catholic. I'm also a part of uh, the Society of Women Engineers as the vice president this year. I'm also a part of Habitat for Humanity, as well as I work for Res Life uh, during the year as a hall security assistant, which that's like our residents, like RAs and everything on campus within the dorms. Um, and I also have an internship during the year. <laughs> so I'm very busy, but you can ask me a lot of questions about anything pretty much. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, you're a little bit busy. Um, and last but not least, Isabel. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Isabel. I'm from Bethesda, Maryland, and I am a senior architecture major with a minor in sustainability. Thank you. And she's also one of my current studio students. So she's being graded on this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would hope not. I'm just kidding. So welcome, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to um, go to the first slide here. Can everyone see the slide? I shared my screen. I just want to make sure if you can't um, let me know. Okay, good. So basically what's an overview of our session today? What are we gonna be talking about? Um, this is the first in a series. We're gonna be recording each one of these. I would invite you to each and every one of these. It's not the same thing that we're gonna be doing every time. We're gonna kind of build on this. We're recording this one tonight. We're gonna to post it to the website. So if any of your friends um, miss this one, it'll be posted. Or if in the future you miss one because you've got other stuff going on, don't worry, we'll post it. Um, but feel free to come back over and over. I'd love that. Um, I'll get to know your names. I'll, I'll keep asking you to turn on your cameras, that kind of thing. Um, but this is the first in the series. So as you can see in the slide, um, the series is called What You Can Expect from an Undergraduate Architecture Education at Catholic. So that's really what we're going to be talking about. And tonight's session is really a focus on the studio session. And 
why I brought all of these fantastic students and I introduced them in the order that I did is it's a series, first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and that's how I introduced them. So we're, they're gonna be presenting their work in their studios tonight, um, just summaries of what they're doing. Um, so we'll go through that. And then at the end, there's plenty of time for Q&A and any question is totally fair game. Um, students are just gonna answer as they see fit. If it's an admissions question, Abby might join in. If it's something related to architecture, maybe the profession, that kind of thing, I'd be happy to respond. I'm in charge of the IPAL program um, at Catholic University, which is the integrated path to architecture licensure. So I think between all of the people on the call, I think we got every question covered, but you can certainly challenge us on that. Um, so upcoming uh, sessions are going to include the Experiences in Architecture program, which you'll hear about a little bit tonight, but we'll go into depth in a future session. And that's the summer program. If you're interested in Catholic University or are coming, um, we invite you to the summer program to kind of get a jump start on things. You don't have to, um, but it's just a wonderful program to be a part of. Uh, future sessions will include our seminar courses, you know, construction, sustainability, neuroarchitecture, like I mentioned. We'll go into that a little bit. And then throughout the course of all these sessions, I will be inviting various faculty members. So you'll see who are your teachers going to be if you decide to end, uh, attend Catholic. So that basically covers, you're, you're done talking to me for a while until the Q&A. Um, but if, if while we're talking, you, you think of something that you would like another session about, I'd be totally willing to put one together. I, nothing makes me more happy. Um, and my email address is my last name, Puddick at cua.edu. So feel free, you know, drop me an email and let me know what you wanna hear more about and I'll put together a little session for you. I'm happy to do that. So without further ado, I will switch to the next slide and I will introduce Sana once again. She's gonna take it from here, Sana. Hello. <laughs> so this is Experience in Architecture, which was our um, summer camp. It's two weeks, it's basically like a free trial not free trial, but it's basically like a trial to be a student at um, Catholic. Um, we got to experience studio life, residence life. We went into the city. We got to work on projects that real like students would work on. Um, we got to present projects too to like the um, pinups and to the professors to evaluate our work. And they really worked with us because at first we didn't know anything. We we're high school students. We didn't know how to draw. We didn't know how to do anything architecture related, but they really showed us, they held our hands, they showed us what to do <laughs> and how to do it because we were like fresh out. So yeah, that's experience in architecture. I unmuted myself so people didn't hear my dog barking. Um, so the next one, next slide, Sana's just gonna keep talking just like <laughs> I did. Um, so she's gonna talk about her 101 and just a, a quick uh, cheat sheet, how we number our courses. The first digit is the year that you take it. And then this, the last digit is which semester. So 101 would be your first semester of your first year. You'll hear um, different numbers thrown around by the different students. Um, so Sana, without further ado, 101. Yes, okay. So like I said before, I knew nothing about drawing and architectural or like any of the terms or anything. So we start from the beginning. So if you feel like you're not good at drawing, you don't have to worry about that at all. Like you can see in the first picture, we literally did lines <laughs> for like the first week of class. So that's, that was good for me. Um, they really, really puts community, especially since we're online. Like we couldn't be in studio all together or anything. So the architecture school really pushes community. We have our TAs, we have our, um, like all the faculty is very involved. <laughs> like we have a town hall meetings every month, which is put by the students to the dean. Like we all come together, we talk about what's good, what we need to change and all of that stuff. So yeah, very good. <laughs> awesome, Sana, thank you so much. Uh, next we have Sam. Uh, they place a, a very heavy em emphasis on improving in your drawing skills, basically. Uh, but they do this by having these things called daily sketches. I think these help me personally because these sketches um, tell me what I'm go doing good in, what I need to work on, that kind of stuff. Uh, these, ske these sketches can vary from uh, like sketches from lectures, sketches from readings, sketches from 
or just your personal sketches too. Uh, for my personal sketches, I, I like to draw still life, as you can see by my SpongeBob figurine sketch and a stabler sketch right there. Uh, these still life sketches help, um, teach me the importance of adding guidelines and having composition in my drawings. Um, if you look to the right, you'll see a sketch from a lecture about the Basilica, which is located on campus, uh, where they taught us about its history and the different elements of its building. Uh, you also see sketches from a reading that taught us the different types of horizontal planes in architecture. At CUA, I appreciate how they, uh, how they prepare and sharpen your skills and give you the necessary tools you need for architecture. Awesome, thank you, Sam. And I would just add that, for example, um, Tanya is the teacher of 101 this year, and she asked the various faculty to come in and talk. So I'm going to be talking in the 101 in a couple of weeks, um, presenting what I do, what my research is. So it's a great way for you to get to know not only what architecture is all about, but who are all these faculty that you're going to be taking classes from. So it's, a, it's literally a 101 course in architecture. Thank you, sir. Next, we have MJ, 201, second year, first semester. Hi, yeah. So 201 really brings you into like architecture as a whole. You do a lot of analyzing buildings and like super historical and famous buildings throughout it. And then it goes from drawing to digital and like it's also hand drawing, but also digital and it moves back and forth in a way. So it really teaches you fully the full like emphasis of architecture. I feel like 201 has really introduced like things that I was never really known to before, like the difference between like served and service, light and dark and different aspects. And you'll learn confusing things like tart and lines and these things that you won't understand right now, but later on you'll start learning. And 201 is really the studio that was supposed to be like a site visits of all the different places in DC. And since we're online, they do a really well job of showing it Oops, even though sorry. we're sorry <laughs> <Showing it>, even <laughs> though we're not there like they'll do like a google maps kind of virtual world and it'll walk you through it and even some people like take videos they'll go to the site like teachers and then they'll take videos of it to really show you the whole experience that you're missing since we're online so i really like that architecture does have the sense of community even though we're all very far apart right now and even you can see we did things like Union Station if you're in DC and then we did like the public library, all different things. And if you see the bottom left corner, we do this fun like exercise where you have 15 minutes to analyze a drawing and then five minutes and then one minute and then 30 seconds. So it really shows you like the importance of the different aspects of the building and where like it really brings it down to like a whole base level. And then also one more thing to mention, since in 102, you get to do this nine square project where your whole entire semester is building on this nine square project. And then you have nine squares and do basically whatever you want. And then you develop it more and more, add ramps and then stairs, and then you put it in SketchUp and digitalize and all that stuff. And it's just super fun. And it's your first like building you'll ever kind of develop, well, building, but yeah. And then I'm going to pass it on to Julia. Thank, Thank you. you, MJ. Julia, great. Wonderful. Um, so as I've said before, I'm a, a junior, but I'll start with actually that nine square project that MJ was just talking about. Um, on my the, the left corner with the very smiling, happy me uh, from freshman year, I had just finished that first design project. Um, and I came in knowing nothing about architecture besides the fact that I liked building Legos um, and thought that was cool. And um, so I was really excited to actually produce something that was both a model and a lot of digital stuff that programs I've never touched before. And Catholic definitely helped you to develop these skills starting from scratch in Photoshop and SketchUp. And I think that year I used Rhino um, and Revit and a lot of different things that they try to push you in um, and make sure that you understand them when you use them. Um, so I was very excited about that. But then as we said before, we do a lot of sketching, but even in my sophomore year, when that was the, the sketching semester and we were going around and looking at all the different facades and going around DC and looking at all the historical buildings, we did um, in that, that middle side of my sophomore year, um, those were some hand carvings actually that we did out of foam, um, looking at facades and looking at the subtractive and additive elements of a building. And 
how that can play into your final design. And um, which goes with that other image with my sophomore year of my final model um, mm -hmm. for my project. So I had a big board with that one as well, but um, that was a 132nd scale model of a cafe that we were designing with the integrative art um, garden uh, around it that was supposed to be using sustainable principles. That was a really big step from the nine square project, but using the tools that we did with the sketching and uh, uh, looking at the tartan lines that MJ was talking about and different skills like that, we could develop our projects to be um, a model similar to what I just produced. And then I kept developing that with my spring 202. That was obviously during quarantine um, and everything going on. So that was my final board that you see there that um, we were designing a brewery actually that was within the Washington DC area, which was rather ironic because no one in my class is 21. So we kind of had to start from the basics of what is beer and how is it made? Because we're not supposed to know this. So I didn't actually know it. Um, and so I learned that there's actually four ingredients in beer, um, which is, you can see in my design, I have these four silos. That was my main process of going farm to fermentation and um, trying to show that experience to someone like me who didn't know it before they're going into this brewery. Um, so you can really see how you're picking things up as you go from year to year and elevating your designs from just being the building to being the whole experience as you're going in it. Um, so that gets to me now in my junior fall and I'm currently in a classical studio, which is a little bit different than the typical um, the studios that can be anything, <laughs> but the classicals are a little bit more structured and um, they wanna look at main proportions and keeping things regular and using the classical elements of columns and orders. Um, and so right now I'm in that. And so you can see my sketches on the left hand bottom corner of the screen that I'm starting to work on my final design that we're building a civic center in Washington DC, which obviously, as I said, I'm in South Carolina. Um, so I can't visit the site, but we're still going and working as a group of people who are in DC and able to go take pictures and do the site plans and the site models that we're building in Revit. And at the same time I'm building in Revit, I'm also doing these sketches. So you can finally see as you're going along the years, you're using the sketching education as well as the program education to kind of integrate everything um, as you go along and it keeps adding, which is I think really wonderful to see. Excellent. I, I think that you folks are getting a sense of the, the additive process that Julie is talking about. Every year, every semester, you learn a little bit more. I also appreciate that she talks about the classical and the modern. Catholic University is one of the few universities in the country that really um, focuses on both. So if you're interested in one or the either, one or the other, and you're not sure which, or maybe you're both, it's a great place to come. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. Isabel. Hi, so once again, I'm Isabel, and on the left hand of the screen, you can see some of my progress throughout the school, starting with my freshman year studio, the nine, nine square project that everyone's been talking about, and below that is fall of sophomore year. Um, my favorite project is uh, spring of sophomore year, and this was a project to design a restaurant in Georgetown, and for this, my professor had us pick a main idea and relate everything in from this idea to the design and yeah, all that. So I worked really hard on the project. I made so many models for it that I could barely close my trunk, uh, but I loved doing all of the work for it. And I really fell in love with every aspect in the design. Um, so then the next project is fall of junior year. And then lastly, um, it's the spring of, yeah, spring of junior year when I was abroad in Rome before coming back. Um, so throughout all these projects, I definitely was able to learn my strategies on how to best approach projects. And I think Catholic did a really good job with providing a variety of professors who had various ways of approaching these projects. And through that, I was able to learn what worked best for me. And then below my junior spring of 302, I have a picture of my desk from junior year. And in the architecture building, we have a really big community culture and everyone has a desk. And um, just walking around, you can see everyone's progress and work in studio and throughout all the years of um, studio. So I found that I really love my desk. And since sophomore year, I always called it the communal desk. So many people would always just come by and ask me to use supplies 
or they would just stand there and like play with the top of my markers and just say nothing, just stand there. So it really, there's a big community culture. And then also um, going back to the community aspect of it, me and my friend who sat next to each other, we would always like make our desk just a fun space for us. So if one of us was stressed, we would make like each other little drawings or little notes and then just hang it up on our desk and like really make it a nice place for us. And then for studio, I would also hang up some concept models or anything else that I needed to reference throughout the semester. And shockingly, that is how my desk looked year round. I'm very proud of that. Uh, for my studio now, I'm in a net zero studio. And basically that means that we're trying to create a building that uses sustainable strategies to produce as much resources as it uses. Uh, so this includes things like catching and reusing the rainwater that falls on the site or using as much daylight as possible to avoid using artificial lights. Um, for my project now, I'm working with a partner on a school reuse project. So this is really good because it teaches us collaboration on a project at this level. So here you can see we have our site analysis, which helps inform us on what we want to focus on for the concept of our building, which is mainly nature and bringing the community together. So since it's a collaboration, we each had to come up with our own concept. Like we're going to narrow it down to focus on fun for the rest of the semester. And we're supposed to do that tomorrow. <laughs> so um, for my concept, I chose the word phototropic, and that's the movement of plants towards the sun. So everything moving forward in the design will relate back to this main idea. Uh, the project is still in the development stage, but overall, I'm really excited to be in a net zero um, studio. And that's something that's going to be really necessary in the future of design. And it's also what I want to do with my architecture career. So when I first came to Catholic, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with architecture. So someone would ask me like what I wanted to do after school with architecture. And I would just be like, um, architecture, like obviously. Uh, but the classes I took early on, like environmental design, definitely helped me realize that sustainability is something that I'm really passionate about and find really cool. Um, so I'm really glad that Catholic offered um, studios of this kind and it'll give me so much experience for after school, especially since sustainability is something that I want to do with my career. Awesome, Isabel, thank you. So what do you guys think? Should I give her extra credit since she's one of my students? Yeah, you think? Okay, I'm here. I'm seeing a lot of, yeah, thumbs up. Okay, good job, Isabel. So what I wanted to just um, overlay on her beautiful discussion, you can kind of see the progression here from the first year nine square project all the way through from your first day, we're gonna take you out in the city in DC and you're gonna be drawing and sketching um, and learning from our urban environment that we're in. And then gradually you're gonna be building on that. And then you're gonna be designing pavilions. By third year, you're gonna be studying civic architecture, urban planning. Fourth year is kind of a free for all in the first semester. Every professor gets to kind of do what they wanna do. And what I'm doing is my net zero. That's what, that's what I've done in my profession. Um, so I'm teaching the, the students all about that. We're partnering with Arlington Public Schools. We're meeting with them tomorrow. Everyone from Arlington Public Schools is coming to see what Isabel has done. It's gonna be probably a late night for her. Um, and then the next semester, the last semester of the fourth year is the Capstone Studio, and we call it Integrated Building Design Studio. And that's where all of your eight semesters come together. You work again with teams and you produce a, a project together. Um, and it, it really, it's the community that all comes together because it's a group effort. So um, without further ado, that is the presentation. I hope, I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope it kind of was exciting to hear from who might be your peers if you come to Catholic University. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over um, to q and I saw some questions come in the chat. I wasn't able to do two things at once, unfortunately. Um, so happy to, to answer those. I don't know, Abby, do you want to moderate the Q&A? Yeah, yeah. We, awesome. the, the first one that came in was um, from Brian asking where they can find the video on the website um, once we're done recording here. And so that would probably be a question to you. So that'll be on the admissions website, I'm assuming, right next to the virtual tours. Is that er, the virtual sessions? Um, so we haven't posted any because we haven't recorded any sessions um, in the past. Oh, okay. So we can post it there if you want to post it on the architecture website um, somewhere okay. we can do that as well. Okay, so what I think I would do, Abby, you're taking the contact information of everyone that registered tonight. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can send out an email once we figure out where it'll be, because I'd like to volunteer that we'll put it on the architecture website. That seems okay. to make a lot of sense. Um, but I'd like to close that loop um, uh, and let you all know in an email. So 
Look for it on the architecture website, but we'll give you the exact link after this session tonight. And then the next one that came in was from Sophia and she asks, do you, do you um, draft with CAD, CAD? Who wants yes. to handle that? There you go, Julia. I, I can say that I'm currently drafting with CAD along with my Revit models and my sketching for Classical Studio. So you definitely will draft with CAD as well as using it for our laser cutters um, and the models that we have on campus. Um, because that's the only program that will work with the laser cutters. So it's uh, something that you don't have to know once again coming in, but uh, you can learn it while you're on campus and you'll definitely use it. The next question that we have is from Margaret. And so she asks, what do you need coming in to the architecture program, which I'm assuming is coming in as an incoming freshman, any particular classes or any background in architecture? Sure, so maybe I'll jump in and then I'd love to hear from the students to, to say that. So basically, um, you would gain admittance to the School of Architecture and then you hit the ground running. And if you place out of certain courses, you would get additional electives. But basically, you just have to be admitted to the school. Um, and really from 101, um, we start telling you what you need as you go through the curriculum. 102 is when you start to need the drawing supplies, yeah, sure. you know, the pencils, the okay. rulers, the T-squares all of that kind of thing. So it kind of builds what softwares you might need to purchase, that kind of thing. So we give you plenty of advance notice for what you need to um, purchase in order to access the curriculum. Does that answer the question? Do you think, Abby, who was the question asker? <laughs> Just again. Um, it was uh, Margaret. Margaret. Margaret, does that answer the question? Or would you like some more students to comment? We're good. Maybe we're good. Cool. Um, the next question is, um, oh, Margaret said she meant um, concerning classes. I think maybe coming in from high school. Um, I know on the admission side, there's no specific classes we're looking for, but any, any classes that might be helpful if you're a current high school senior? Sure, and I think that's a great question. I would love the students to chime in on this as well, because I think one of the great things is you don't have to come knowing everything. We take it from here. Um, but if you're curious and interested, if you have an, any kind of an architecture class at your um, high school, that would be great. Intro to architecture, that kind of thing. Drawing courses, math courses, science, physics. What's the beautiful thing about architecture is it doesn't fit into a box. It's not a bachelor's of art, not, you know, bachelor's of science. It's really architecture. It's the blending of art and science. Um, so you really learn a little bit Oh, or a lot about a lot, I would say. But students, what do you guys think? Classes. Yeah, I didn't take too many like architecture focused classes. And so I was going in, I was a little concerned about that. But honestly, I didn't need anything going into it. I think they do a good job prepping you for what you need later on. So yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was, I was, sorry, I was going to actually go off that the next question that did come in with portfolios and how that related to the classes question and that's something you didn't need uh, coming into Catholic you don't need a portfolio yet and that's what you're going to build while you're at Catholic. Um, and that's what like we're working on now and I'm working on getting my portfolio ready um, to apply to internships and everything, so you don't need a uh, portfolio coming in for admissions. We actually have a portfolio workshop coming up. I just sent an email about that. So we're having a professional from Gensler, which is one of the top five architecture firms in the world, come in and host a workshop. It'll be on Zoom, but that's okay, um, about uh, what a really good portfolio looks like. What are tips and strategies? So we help you with that along the way. At the end of your four years, if you wanna stay at Catholic and continue on and get a master's degree, um, that, then you would have to submit a portfolio. Um, to us, or if you're from outside Catholic and you want to come to get your graduate degree from Catholic, you would submit a portfolio at that time. So Julia's talking about a portfolio, certainly get jobs, internships, but it's also if you're interested in graduate school. And then the next question after that that we have is, will freshmen be allowed in the studio next year? <laughs> So I'll probably take that one too. I don't know, students, feel, feel free if you want to jump in. Nobody has the answer to this one. I will tell you, um, being the associate dean, I'm involved with all of the meetings and you all know this world is a very evolving thing right now. So freshmen right now have in-person classes at Catholic University. 
um, sophomores and up do not. They're all 100% online. Um, and we did that to try to be conservative and to be safe. That was our first priority. Um, so can I predict the future? I really can. I would like to hopefully optimistically say yes. Um, I, I don't think I can say much more than that sentence, <laughs> um, hopefully, um, yeah. And then the next one was, are there study abroad courses for architecture? Okay, I think Isabel, that's for you, right? Because you did it. Uh, my internet like broke for a second, am I back? You're back, you're back. Okay, good. <laughs> of course, like when I get the, right, that seems to be the trend. Uh, so what was the question again? It was about study abroad. So if you could share a little bit about the courses you took while you were studying in Rome. Yeah, so I was, of course, in Rome, and we had our main studio classes. Um, so then we had our structures class, which was um, online. So they did have a structures class here in person in DC, but we also took it online. So we were in line with um, what everyone here was doing. And then we took one uh, field study class where we went around Rome and we got to sketch. Um, and basically we went out for maybe like two or three hours once a week and it was a awesome class. And then we also had an elective. So I took a, um, what was it? It was a religious uh, architecture class. So it was studying like all the churches in Rome. So we also got to go around Rome a lot then um, visiting the different churches and learning about the evolution of churches, especially in Rome. So, yeah. I want to go. That sounds great. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> um, and so then our next question, because I believe the one after that was asked about a portfolio, um, which we answered. So how do you figure out if you want to be an architect or I'm assuming a license, become a licensed architect? Ooh, that's a good question. What do you, you, students first and then I'll talk. What do you think? I'll go first. So for me, for uh, when I decided I wanted to do architecture, it was never really a split moment where I was like, yes, I want to do architecture. It was just like, since I was five, I always like made like little paper models of like parks for my little like poly pockets and all that. So I've just always had like some inclination towards like design and like making things. So throughout like high school, I, my parents were like, oh, you should consider architecture. And I was like, wow, that's like a thing I can do. So then I ended up um, just like realizing like, wow, I actually really like architecture. So that's how I personally knew. Yeah, I mean, I obviously have not really chosen yet that since I'm still doing two degrees. Um, <laughs> so I'm still keeping my options open and I've actually, currently been working um, with in a construction firm for my last two summers in an internship as um, more of the engineering side, but I've also been working with an architecture firm um, throughout the past year as a remote worker. Um, so I'm still exploring my options and I don't know necessarily if I'm going to be licensed um, and I think I'm going to lean towards more of the engineering and just have my architecture degree to supplement all of my learning, especially in the construction industry and how important the um, the communication between architects and engineers should be uh, like developed and worked on. And I think I can use my skills in that way. And I went to study architecture just because I was interested in, a, in it, but not necessarily to go work in it. Excellent. It's funny, my husband is a civil engineer. So we have a lot of that overlap right here in our house. And what I would say for me personally, um, as soon as I started taking architecture classes, I just knew it was for me. I just loved it. I fell in love with it. And then I started interning every summer and I really sought after mentors that would just show me the ropes. I worked in a small residential firm. I worked in a mid-sized commercial firm. I worked at Gensler, one of the biggest firms in the world. Um, I did civic architecture. I did a lot of sampling, sought out a lot of mentors, tried to figure it out. And then I just found my home in civic architecture at a mid-sized firm. And I, I was a partner there for years and years. Um, so it's kind of everyone's personal story, but if you actively seek out mentors and internships and talk to your professors, a lot of us work, we practice. Um, so that would be a, a great way. And talking to your peers, um, doing volunteer activities. Uh, DC is the home to the AIA, the US Green Building Council. So many national, um, 
uh, organizations are rooted here. So there's so many people and activities. You can go to lectures at the National Building Museum and hear from world famous architects. Um, so you'll get a good sampling of what the architecture profession is all about. And then at Catholic University, like I had said earlier, we have the integrated path to architecture licensure. So we can put you on an accelerated path, especially if you're a strong student, hook you up with internships, um, help you support you through the uh, ARE exams, the architecture registration exams, because there's three parts to becoming an architect. You have to get a degree from an accredited school, which Catholic is. Um, you have to work internships a certain number of hours, and then you have to take exams. So Catholic University supports you in all steps of that process to become a licensed architect. I'm glad you were talking about the IPAL program because that goes right into the next question, which oh. is the IPAL pro program hard to get into, or can you talk a little bit about the requirements for a student who does want to go into the IPAL program? Sure, definitely happy to do that. So basically at the end of your first semester, so Sanaa and Sam will maybe be considering it, um, you would apply to the IPAL program. And right now you have to have at least a 3.2 grade point average in your first semester for consideration. You have to have a recommendation letter from your first year um, professor, which would be Tanya in their case. Um, and then um, generally you would probably meet with me um, to make sure that it's a good fit because it's a demanding program. Um, you're not doing any more work per se, but you're really nice active. You're really actively seeking out internship opportunities. Um, uh, so, sorry, that lost my focus for just one second. Um, what was the next part? What was the next part of the question? If you can read that again. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Just the general requirements to get into the IPEL program. Okay, so yeah, so the, the letter of recommendation from your your teacher, 3.2 grade point average, we might be sliding that up because we really want to set you up for success. Um, juggling all of this new content, your social life, everything else going on is a lot. Um, but to be in that um, IPEL program, we really want the students, like I said, to be set up for success. So if you do come to Catholic, I'll be talking to you. I'm actually jumping into Tanya's 101 to talk more about IPEL. Um, there's wonderful uh, website resources, NCARB, N-C-A-R-B is the organization um, that, that hosts that IPAL program, and they have a wonderful online resource if you want to read more about it. Um, so yeah, happy to answer more questions about that if you want. Next question is, what requirements do we need for the application, um, which I can talk a little bit about since um, it's going to be kind of the general admissions application. Um, so the application requirements are pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot that you need to worry about having in the application. Um, as Robin was saying, there's no portfolio you need for the architecture program. If you, you know, you're not going to be penalized if you didn't take architecture classes or things like that, since some, you know, many high schools might not have those offerings. Um, those are always great to have and great to build into your application, but they're not required. Um, what we're looking for is your completed common app, um, at least one letter of recommendation a school report and counselor letter, your official high school transcript, and then a component of the application, the Common App essay. Um, we don't have any specific topic that we're looking for or specific answer that we're looking for, whichever essay you wanna write about. We're looking just to see, did you stay on the prompt, correct spelling, grammar, punctuation, things like that. Um, we also include a Catholic University statement in the application. It is completely optional, but three, about three quarters of our applicants complete it. And it simply asks why Catholic. And so a lot of students use that section to talk about why they might be interested in studying you know, a specific program at Catholic, what really drew them to Catholic, you know, maybe it's location in DC, um, the religious component. So that's where you can really talk about your draw to architecture. Um, you know, some students have even talked about doing the summer program. Um, so those are all great things to see in the application. Um, two things we do not need in terms of an application, we are not charging an application fee. So there's no fee waiver, no code you need to enter. It is completely free to apply to the university. The second thing is this year, due to all the testing disruptions, we are test blind. Um, so we are not reviewing ACT, SAT test scores um, as part of your uh, review to the university or for merit scholarships or the honors program. It's going to be based on your performance in high school and your personal qualities. Um, because I know a lot of people have had every single test they've tried to take disrupted. Um, we were test optional prior to this. Um, so we will be test blind this year. Then the next question is, what are the internship opportunities available? 
Excellent question. Um, I just sent out an email to um, the IPEL students about this just now because they're looking for internships next semester. Um, so basically several different ways. In a typical world without the coronavirus, we host different soirees where we invite 40 different firms to come mingle with our students. Obviously we can't do that right now. The DC um, rules prohibit gatherings of 50 people or more. Um, so we're doing them online. Um, we all have a network here in DC or across the world, really, uh, the nation, the world. We're placing a couple of students in international internships this year. Um, but basically, the professors have this network. We're right here in DC. Um, when I was talking about that capstone studio in 402, the second semester of your fourth year, you go into architecture firms. Um, and you present your work and it's kind of like an interview. Um, every year, I've been teaching it for three or four years, every year they kind of tell me the five students that they're interested in hiring and they do. Um, so there's all those kind of networking opportunities. We have a career fair, not only for the School of Architecture where we invite Oh goodness, students, help me out. How many rooms and rooms filled with architects? 70, 80 firms maybe? Does that sound right? It's packed. And then students circulate with their resumes. Um, they get business cards. Uh, they have a chance to put a face with the name and vice versa, which is a wonderful opportunity. So you're not just sending cold emails to people you don't know. You've already met them. You know, and you can say, hi, I'm Julia, I talked to you. And remember, I told you I was a dual major and da, 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 da. Um, rugby, you know, they'll probably remember the rugby, I would think. Um, and then the university, Catholic University has career fairs. Um, and we just had one a couple of weeks ago where there was 15 um, construction firms there which I'm a huge proponent for architecture students to take a construction internship. Let's learn how to put these buildings together. Um, so the university helps um, in those ways. So DC is a wonderful place. It is the, the most popular place to get a job, even when the economy gets hit. That's, that's the last place that really gets hit in our country. So um, being in DC is a wonderful benefit there as well. So I would say the overall network of the um, faculty um, a lot of us are professionals. Uh, we have that network. And then our courses, certainly in the more upper levels, we're taking you out, bringing you into firms so you get to know these people that are doing the hiring. Students, did I miss anything? You want to weigh in on anything? How you found internships, anything like that? I think you touched on how to find internships, but another big thing that um, we didn't actually mention is how often internships are usually emailed to us. Like even today, there was an internship that was like, oh, we're looking for interns right now that we want Catholic University students from the architecture school, um, which is just a huge thing that firms are reaching out to us asking um, for interns. Um, I think it's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's a great network. Thank you, Julia. Um, the next question we have is, how do you balance your architecture work and your work from your other classes? Who has it figured out? <laughs> so, I mean, as I mentioned in the beginning, I have a lot of different clubs and uh, different internships going on right now. And I'm currently taking 24 credits. Um, so I'm definitely packed, but I like to stay very time managed. And I have a very detailed planner of all of my homework and every all of my dates that I have going on. Um, but that being said, I still do have friends and like I still have Zoom calls now with my friends. Um, or when we were in person, we would do homework together and just simple things like that to make sure that um, you can have some connectivity with people, which is where a studio space was really huge and really helpful for that, um, especially within the architecture school and um, building your friendships. But um, having a, a work of schoolwork and life balance is really huge. And that's why I do join a lot of clubs in order to have time outside of class to meet other people, which is where like Habitat is a great example. I've met people that are philosophy and nursing and gotten friends from that way. Um, but even within the architecture school, my best friend right now, um, I met her on my Habitat trip my freshman year, um, which we were in all these classes together, but hadn't had a same studio or hadn't been next to each other in class. And so then we got to meet each other and got to know that we were very similar people. And um, so I think joining clubs is actually a way yes you can become more busy but then you meet more people and have more of a balance of your own life away from class yeah i can add on to that i agree like fully with like um a lot of people divide like friends and work i would disagree with that i would talk to my friends and like communicate fully and also like my studio space was like 
my closest group of friends that I've ever had because like you're always there you're always talking to them constantly it's just also like you can get work done with also like them doing the same work it really helps you out and makes it feel like more of like a centered like community kind of thing and it's like a weird thing that I thought of when I saw this question is a lot of people think weekends are when you slack off I disagree I think it's when you go on and you catch up with everything and you work like and you can get all work done per perfectly and all that stuff so like I think you can find a really good management between um school and fun yeah. I just like to comment really quickly from a faculty perspective I talked to the faculty the other faculty that is teaching the same students that I am we know when the exams are they know when my studio projects are due and we really try to plan accordingly and not switch our schedules um, so that students might have an exam and a pinup, right, Isabel, the same day, um, but they have plenty of notice. They have 10 weeks of notice that that's going to happen, you know, and we don't change our schedules. I always say I'll never change my schedule unless I give you more time, that kind of thing. And I'm also very empathetic to the students. I have two teenage daughters of my own. Um, I get it. I was, I was you guys. I totally get it. I care about the well-being of the students. Um, so, I'll meet with my students off hours, anything I can do to help them um, take the pressure off. And at the end of the day, we want happy, healthy individuals that are learning a lot and having fun. And that's the focus. So yes, you can pull all of these you know, all-nighters you know, if you want. I always try to tell my students, please don't do that. Please try to get some sleep. I care about you. Um, so it's a balance for everybody, but isn't that a wonderful place? You, you learn that balance in, in the university setting. Adding on to that from a student perspective, Perspective. Oh, sorry. Um, I've seen that like my teachers are very understanding if we have like a test or like pin up. So like last year, one of my history professors, if someone had a pin up or like if one level had a pin up, um, he would make the next class optional. Like so the pin or the class that would be the day of the pin up, he would say like, okay, it's okay. You guys don't come in. It'll be optional. So come in if you want, but if you really need to go back and sleep, then that's fine. So in my experience, the professors have been very understanding. Our next question um, is how many students are admitted into the freshman class? Um, so I can kind of give a general numbers wise. Um, we usually have a little over 6,000 applicants each year for the entire university. Um, and our acceptance rate is around 75 to 80%. Um, but our quality of students is also really high. Um, our average GPA is an unweighted 3.5 on a 4.0 scale. Um, back when we were still accepting test scores, I believe our average was about a 1270, 1280 SAT and around a 28, 29 on the ACT. Um, so we do have really strong quality students coming in. Um, looking this year, we, between our both architecture and students that had entered in, under the joint program, because you can apply um, as a civil engineering double major with architecture. Um, it looks like there was somewhere between 60 to 70 students. And over the past two years, since those are the only two years I could see the numbers for, it looked about the same um, for the programs each. So we typically then have an entire freshman class, um, usually of about 850, somewhere between 800 to 850 students for the university wide. And then the next question that came in, um, how strong is the alumni network and its connections? Hmm. This one might stump me. Abby, do you have a, a comment on that one? I, I can speak to it from a from a architecture point of view. Yeah, I think that, yeah, definitely feel free to speak from it. Okay, sure. So basically I reach out to alumni now that I've been teaching there four years, I, I have that four years worth of people that I know. I invite them back to be jurors in our pinups. Uh, they're in different firms all over DC and I hook up with them as partners, bring my students to them. So that's just the four years worth of that I've been teaching there. And now that we're online, these alumni graduate and they go all over the world and I'm bringing them back. Um, from California or whatever, because we're on Zoom together. So then they can talk to my students from California or from wherever they are. Um, so I, I think that's a, that's a wonderful benefit of kind of being online now. And then I will say that, so I've only been there four years, so that's my network. I know other professors that, you know, go to the weddings of their former students. Some of the professors have been there 35, even 40 years. Okay, so they have multiple generations of their network. And, and actually, I just talked to one of the professors today because I had a question and I said, Anne, tell me everything about 
blah, blah, blah. And, and she just has this wealth of knowledge because she's been teaching a Catholic for 30 plus years. Um, and she knows students that have had children and then have had students here. So multi-generation. So um, the network is big. Uh, we know people in pretty much every firm. Uh, architecture firm between all of us as a faculty. And then what I would say is not necessarily the alumni connection, but someone like me that was practicing for 20 years and then came to academia, I have my practice network. So you kind of have this hybrid of networks of every faculty member. And then the next question is, does Catholic U have a core curriculum? So yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> and it's keeping me up at night. No, it's not. We, um, the university changed their curriculum in 2018 and I am new to my assistant Dean role. So I'm really just jumping into it now. Um, so I might not be the best person um, most qualified to ask. And Abby, I don't know if we can refer them to somebody else, but basically there is a core curriculum, philosophy, theology, English, math, and maybe students, you can, you can share some more. Um, there's certain classes that you have to take for the core because we wanna, we wanna inspire uh, people with a general education, not just in one, topic because architects especially we got to know a lot about a lot we take our inspiration from all different places but students do you have things that i didn't mention yeah they have this thing called lc's the first year and that you take um theology english and philosophy throughout the whole first year and it's like um 20 kids are the same throughout the whole year and you really, it helps you not only like learn about philosophy, but it also develops connections with like other students in like a small area too. And I wouldn't, I know other schools that have very intense core curriculums. I wouldn't say it's very overwhelming where I feel like we do mainly do um, like our major classes, but also you also have an addition of other classes, I would say. And I would say it's easy to get a major, a minor. Um, because there's a lot of program electives that are kind of, you can take whatever you want within the School of Architecture, free electives that you can kind of dabble out. You can be Julia taking 24 credits, you know, you can kind of, so we're expecting you to take about 15 credits a semester. And if you want to take 18 or if you want to stay over a summer, um, there's a lot of ways to, you know, we talked about the dual major um, to get different minors. Our school offers a, a minor in sustainability also, which is very easy to get. Uh, you'll see me if you do it. I teach a lot of those classes um, because it really pairs itself really well with a degree in architecture. We need to know about sustainability, certainly in the world we're living in today. And then the next question that came in is how many students are in the dual architecture civil engineering program? I know I have just like exact point of entry numbers. I don't have the, the current enrollment, but I don't know if you might have access to that exact number. I can at least speak for my class. Um, oh. I know that personally, my class started my freshman year, like orientation day with 40 people and um, we're now down to five, but that's not in like a scary, like, oh, but it's just people decide what they want to do and whether or not they want to go into just engineering, just architecture. Um, and it's not people just like straight out dropping all of everything. Um, I think pretty much all of those people that were in the 40 have just decided which one they liked better and decided that they were stronger and didn't need the extra degree. But um, our five people are now very tight knit and <laughs> we know each other very well. <laughs> so we have about 300 students, I think, in the overall School of Architecture. Um, I think it was 20 or 30 came this year as freshmen as a dual degree. Um, and exactly like Julia said, because now I'm now the associate dean, so I sign program changes. Like if a dual degree decides to change to just architecture, or if a dual degree decides to change just to engineering, I have to sign that form. And I think probably since July, I signed five of those forms, maybe six. So students are trying to figure out, and I think it's a testament to Catholic University, like you can try engineering and architecture, figure out which one you like better and then choose. Um, without wasting any time, which is which is a benefit I, I see. Or if you want to be one of the core group that graduates with both, I've taught a lot of them in my integrated building design studio. Um, and, and they're actually taking that fourth year class and they still don't know what they really want to do. And that's okay too, because guess what? You get a degree in both and then you can kind of decide. And it could be based on which internship you get, you know, that kind of thing. So I hope I answered that. It's not so much that they're leaving the university, they're just moving into... Different. moving sideways into another program. So. Definitely, definitely, yes. 
And then our next question is, what is the professional degree? Sure, so I can speak to that. And it is a little complicated, this answer, because the National um, Council of Architecture Registration Board really respects each state. So each state can um, make its own rules. But basically, you need an accredited degree from an accredited institution, a National Accreditation and Architecture Registration Board, whatever, NAAB, um, and Catholic University is that. But in order to get the accredited degree, you need to get the Bachelor's of Science in Architecture, which is a four-year degree. And then we'd love you to hang around for another two years to get your Master's of Architecture. So the professional degree is actually the Master of Architecture. But you can't just start that degree. Let's just say you get an English degree as your Bachelor's. In order to take that Master's of Architecture degree, that professional degree, it'll take longer then if you get the bachelor's of science in architecture then you'll get that masters of architecture degree degree quicker in just two years so that's the professional degree that you need in most states to be able to start sitting for your exams to become a licensed architect but again i would say look at the ncarb website because every state has a little bit different rules on each of those things Any other questions that people didn't have a chance to ask or weren't answered in any previous statements? Or even what I'd love to hear is if anyone wants to hear a specific topic in another session, like what we did tonight, um, I would be welcome. You can put it in the chat, that kind of thing. Would love to hear from you guys. What else, what other information we can kind of focus on, who we can bring in, if you wanna hear from the faculty, I'm already planning that. I would love to hear that. We did get another question in. Um, do you touch on interior design at all in any classes or is there any type of interior design component? Sure, and I, I'm happy to respond to that as well. Like I've said a couple of times tonight, architecture, you have to know a lot about a lot. Um, so we talk about site design, we talk about interiors, we talk about design, we talk about history, we talk about construction, we talk about sustainability, we talk about the sacred um, sense of architecture. So we, we talk about everything. Um, and then as you get to a graduate level, we have a concentration in the interior. So you can take a couple course specific um, or class topic specific courses in interiors, for example, or maybe you have a professor that really wants to focus on interior or offers a special course. So I would say it is one of the many aspects of architecture, but we're not a, um, a certified interior design school. I know some other universities have an interior design program. We do not have that. And then the next two questions, since they kind of align a little bit, I'm gonna combine them. Um, so one is, how long does it usually take if you're just getting a BA degree, the bachelor's degree? And then if you earn your BS in architecture at Catholic, um, do you automatically move on towards earning your master's at Catholic or kind of what's what's the next step to get your master's? Sure thing. And then the very beginning of your question, you said BA, do you mean the bachelor's of art in architecture studies? I believe so. Yeah. Okay, so there's a bachelor's of art in architecture studies. Um, and that basically is a degree. What I see, what I have been seeing is a student will come in as a bachelor's of science um, in architecture, a BS ARC. And then they decide after a year or so that really this intense studio environment, not really for them. Then they can kind of, what we were just talking about with civil engineering and architecture, they can kind of take a lateral move into a bachelor of art of architecture studies, a BAAS. Now that would be a degree um, that if you continue and you graduate from that as a four-year degree and you decide, oh, I actually do want to be an architect, then you have to take that longer Master's of Architecture program. But if you stay in that Bachelor's of Science in Architecture here at Catholic for four years and you decide you really want to be a professional architect, I'll say, welcome, come on. And then you do two more years. And um, at the end of that, you have your professional degree. Um, and then you can start taking the exams. Um, you would internship, get those hours. The one really nice part about the IPAL program is if you're in the IPAL program, you can start taking the exams before you graduate. Nobody else can do that unless you're an IPAL student. You have to have that degree first before you can start taking the exams. Everyone can start adding up their internship hours, though, whether or not you're in the IPAL program or not. Um, and then if you come from another university with a bachelor's of science in architecture, it will just take you two years. 
here at Catholic to get that professional degree. But that's not going to be anyone's situation here because you're all going to come to Catholic University to get your bachelor's of science in architecture, right? Um, did I answer that question? I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. Yeah. Okay. And then um, if you wouldn't mind repeating again the website to look through to learn about tests and qualifications to get the license. Sure thing. We call it NCARB. So it's N-C-A-R-B dot org. National Council of Architecture Registration Board. Okay. So basically that's the national governing body that um, oversees the uh, licensure of all the architects. So they control how many hours you have to earn um, the physical exams when you can register to take them. And then um, you would prove to them that you have an accredited degree. So those three parts. So that's ncarb.org. And I put that in the chat as well. Oh, so perfect. Thank you. Copy and paste. And then is there any specific computer that you recommend that follows the requirements that are laid out on the website? I'm going to let the students talk about that and then I'll talk about that. So one thing is I just put in the chat, there's actually a link from the architecture school about specs for a laptop that you can get um, that is pretty outlined of different things that we suggest because you have to run a lot of programs on your computer. Um, but like one main takeaway of please get a Windows computer because a Mac won't run a lot of the programs. Um, so you have to be able to have a um, like a high core for your computer. If you don't know anything about computers, it has to be able to run a lot um, and it has to have a good memory. So follow those specs that I did put in the chat, but if you have any other questions. Awesome, Julie, I think you covered it. I was gonna say that same thing, no max, especially as you get to higher and higher levels. And then we had another question come in. Can you bring a PC to Catholic or is it only a laptop? Um, I know in our computer labs on campus, we do actually have PC, both PC and Mac. Um, so if you don't have a laptop, I do, they, they do have computer labs around campus that you can use. I don't know if there's any special labs in the architecture school or in the architecture building in the Crow Center as well, um, if students have access to those if they don't have a laptop. Yes, yeah, so in the Crow Center, we have several computer labs. Um, with lap, uh, with PCs, but also when I jump around to different student desks, not everyone's desks are as neat as Isabel's. Um, and a lot of them actually have pretty serious PCs on them, okay? Um, big monitors, PCs, that kind of thing. A lot of people have laptops they bring to classes, you know, take their notes on and that kind of thing. What do you guys say, students? Sing, anything to add? Yeah. It's an interesting culture. If you haven't been inside of an architecture building, people leave stuff lying around. There's computers on desks. You know, it's it's everyone's kind of their own police. You know, you kind of walk around, so you see you'll see all kinds of things on people's desks. Any other questions that anyone has? As we get crickets in. But. I know, and that's okay. This was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. Our next one, I believe, is on, Abby, do you have it in front of us? I think it's the 29th of October. Is that right? I believe so. Okay. Um, it's another Thursday uh, from 5 to 6 p.m. If that 29th sounds right, uh, please join us. We'll be talking about the Experiences in Architecture program, which is a summer program. Um, we'd love to see you there. Each one of these sessions is going to be unique. We're going to record them. And like I said, I'll let you know with an email where we're posting it tomorrow. Thank you so much.